Hi everyone. For the 2022 Multi-GP Global Qualifier, there's a new version of Lifetime we can use that has some new features that are pretty exciting for us. This new version is 4.0, and we'll go through some of the changes of this version of Lifetime to previous. The previous versions used your ID and password. The new version now uses the chapter API keys. So if you go to your chapter in Multi-GP Racing, Manage, Timing System Key, you'll see your API key, Lifetime, is going to need to utilize. Uh, I'll do Show Key here now. You'll get this key. You'll go to Lifetime, and on Lifetime, under Live Race Media, that's in the upper right-hand corner, you'll go to Partners, make sure you enable the integration to Multi-GP, and here's where you place your API key. The next change with the 2022 Global Qualifier is we can now utilize the existing mechanism of 10 predefined rounds for your qualifier, or we can use ZippyQ type check-in. So let me take you through those changes. Let's go through an example of creating the Global Qualifier event. We'll say Add Event, Championship Qualifier, And it's step two that has the difference. In step two, we have now allow for both the old controlled qualifying, which creates 10 predefined rounds and automatically assigns pilots to those rounds when the pilot joins the race. Or you can utilize ZippyQ, in which case there are no predefined rounds and the rounds are built dynamically by the tablet or kiosk check in system. If you're using ZippyQ, you can also specify how many times that pilot is allowed to be in line. I'm going to go through a demonstration first of the old mechanism and then show how I convert that to the new mechanism, as I expect some chapters may have already created their races using the old mechanism. It is possible to change them to ZippyQ, and I'll show you how. I've created my global qualifier using the traditional mechanism of 10 predefined rounds. And you'll notice when I join, this race, and then you load the schedule, you'll see that there are 10 predefined rounds. If you find yourself in this state and you think later on, oh, I'd rather use the tablet check-in system, let's change that over so we can use the tablets. To do this, you would first update info and change over to say the race type of ZippyQ or schedule type of ZippyQ. So schedule type, we'll just change that to ZippyQ. So that's the first step. And the second step is we need to delete the rounds. So to delete the rounds that have been created, if you go to race schedule, so like if I look at load schedule, all the rounds are there. Go to race schedule and regenerate race schedule. This will delete all of the rounds that have currently been predefined. And since it's ZippyQ, there will be no new rounds created. Uh, those get created later on. This is disruptive. This will erase any timing data that has been synced upward. So now the round data has been deleted. If I go back to and say click load schedule, there is no schedule. So now that I've gotten rid of the round data, our next step is to go ahead and sync this event up with the new version of Lifetime. So we'll go to Lifetime. I'm going to remember this number, 23466. Sometimes it makes it easy. If I go to Live Time, Events, you'll see the From Multi GP button. Place the number of the event up in the ID field, or just you can find it in the list below. Here's my test only. And since I'm doing ZippyQ, there won't be any pilots or races yet defined. We will just say import event. There's going to be a message that's a little odd that will say I'm going to import events or import rounds. Uh, it's going to try, but there are no rounds to import. Next in lifetime, the other settings are really designed for the qualifier. So you don't have to mess with many settings at all. Uh, if you run exactly like this, your qualifier will run just fine. 
because uh, you have to use top three consecutive and so on. A few tweaks that you can make are the auto status, which is new in 4.0, is not really a feature that I like, so I tend to turn this off. That's completely fine to do for the global qualifier. And the other setting that I sometimes change would be that under audio, where I just like the start tone to occur immediately upon pressing the start button. So that's another permitted change within the global qualifier settings. Everything else you would leave as is without changes, uh, especially the qualifying type, heads up, two minutes, and the, the various sort settings. Now that you have live time all ready to go, you would start your pilots queuing up within the ZippyQ system. So let's go do that. So go to ZippyQ, we'll open the kiosk, and I'll start adding pilots. So we've added our pilots to the race. Next, you'll want to begin your racing. So you'll go to Live Time, Schedule, and Add Missing Rounds. Add Missing Round brought in the, the one round. You will run this race, Racing. When you've completed the race, You'll go to Schedule, Add Missing Rounds, it imports the round, and we can go to that qualifier. Uh, in this case, you've noticed I only have two pilots. By rule, for global qualifiers, you're supposed to have at least three pilots. So let me show how you can fix that. You would call for a pilot to join one of the other channels. So I'll add a pilot on RaceBand 7. but you'll see it added the pilot to round three. If you want to shift that pilot up there, you can shift up the entire column by clicking on the empty above that row. So race band seven, if I click empty here, it will shift all the slots up by one position. Now this pilot is gonna be there, so now there's three pilots in round two. So go to live time, delete this round, so delete, round two, and then do add missing round. Now when we go to round two, we'll see we have the three pilots that we need. I'll race these pilots, and then we'll go to the steps of finalizing the race. Okay, so we've completed this race. This estimated position is sort of nice so you can see the position of the various pilots as they're going if you want to see them as your race director. If pilots want to see their results, they can go to multi-GP, load schedule, and they can see their results here in the various rounds that they have run. So once you've completed all 10 packs for a pilot, so notice that we are now basing the number of packs that a pilot gets rather than locking into a set number of rounds. So it's possible you could run 20 or 30 rounds as long as pilots do not go over 10 packs. Zippy Q will prevent you from going over your pack limit. Your next steps are to send the final results to MultiGP and then also to finalize the race. First, you go to Live Time events, timing results, and you'll say report final results to multi-GP. When you press this button and then go to multi-GP, you'll now see that it will show you the laps for all 10 packs and then which lap was actually, which time was actually used. So your total time and total packs. You may press that button multiple times. So if you prematurely pressed it, you can run more rounds and press the button again and it will continue to fill out this display. But it's really only mandatory to press this button at the end of the race after all racing is done. You would say report final results to MultiGP to fill out this panel. 
after you've done that, you have one more really important step. And that step is, is to finalize the race. Go to manage, finalize race. When that step completes, when you go to the championship leaderboard, you'll see the results there. If you have any questions, we'll have a group chat that's established with each group of chapters each week that they are running qualifiers. So if you have questions for us, you'll be able to utilize that chat. I will put the link to this version of Lifetime in the video description and also in that group chat that we establish uh, before the race. Thanks for watching.